Well, hi everyone. It's time for another Rancho Palos Verdes update. This article came out from JPL NASA on January 31st. It talks about radar imagery reveals details about Los Angeles area landslides. Of course, they're talking about Rancho Palos Verdes. So I want to get into what measurements and what readings and amount of movement that they've determined and compare it to what the city has collected and also to review again the, their remediation measures, how well that's going, and again, ultimately, is this really going to make a difference in terms of their attempts to slow down the rate of movement for this massive slide that underlies hundreds of homes? And it's been relatively dry for the last several months. And here's a news story talking about incoming rainstorms. This was published on February 11th. I'm recording this on February 15th. And in fact, they did get a lot of rain. So here's one of these pictures of them installing these dewatering wells. It's what a schematic looks like. You, you drill a hole, you've got a slotted casing with a submersible pump, and you pump water out and discharge it. In this case, it goes to header pipes, which discharge to the ocean. A little video of showing this here. This was from a few months back. They spent millions and millions of dollars installing these monitoring wells, and they don't last that long, just a few months, because continued movement uh, shears off the casing for these wells and they're not operable. So they have to redrill the holes for these wells or put in new wells altogether. Now you can see here they've got various dewatering well locations either completed or decommissioned, which means they are sheared off and no longer working. So here's the one that's decommissioned in this figure. So these wells are producing about 800 gallons of water per day. They've discharged a total of 392 acre feet of water which sounds like a lot, but I'm gonna put that in perspective here. So we have various landslides. The one that most people are familiar with is Portuguese Bend landslide, and that's this area here. And because of those rains during those two wet years in particular, an ancient slide much deeper has been activated, and that's this area here. So just the Portuguese Bend location, which is here, is about 240 acres. So if we look at the overall area, that's only about a third of the overall area, maybe less than that. I didn't do a detailed calculation of that, but let's just say the Portuguese Bend landslide area is a third of the total landslide area. So that's over 720 acres involved in the landslide. They've dewatered roughly 400 acre feet of water. So if you had water covering this entire landslide area, that would only be a six inch height of water, which isn't very much. And of course, this dewatering has been occurring during extremely dry season, well below normal precipitation. So they're getting ready to spend $1.6 million here pretty soon. But you can see in the overall effort to try and stabilize this massive landslide. So in the period of October 2022 to June 2025, they spent $46.7 million on their remediation efforts, 18 million of which was just for these dewatering wells. Then they had 7 million in road repairs, and other minor aspects of the stabilization effort. But they're gonna need 35 million more dollars in the next year. And you can see that their planned expenditures are greatly exceeding what they had originally budgeted. So they're spending tens of millions of dollars on this effort. So the question is, is all this dewatering work and expense worth it? So they had a city council meeting for Rancho Palos Verdes on February 4th. And during the presentation, they talked about the difference between water level readings and piezometers where there were no adjacent wells versus piezometers that did have adjacent wells. And they were saying, well, see, we're having an impact. But if you look closer, I think most of the impact is due just to there being extremely dry period over the past six plus months. I mean, the, the wells are having some effect, but essentially what's going on is they're dewatering during an extremely dry period. So it begs the question, what have they done to determine the amount of water that has to be removed if they have normal rainfall for a given year or even excessive rainfall for a given year. I don't hear anybody talking about that. And on uh, February 13th, Thursday, they had over 1.3 inches of rain, still below normal for the year, but certainly wetter than it's been for many, many months. And this just shows you a typical rainfall curve throughout the year, and it totals out to be about 12 inches a year. So they had over 20 inches of rain in 2022 to 2023. The year after that, about 18 inches of rain. Up until recently, they only had 0.31 inches of rain. So very 
little precipitation in the last six plus months. So it was only about a year ago, I believe, that they determined that a lot of this movement, and we're talking several inches per week uh, at the most active period last summer of movement, that they discovered that a lot of this movement was coming from the reactivation of an ancient landslide. So the landslide, say for Portuguese Bend, the one they've been dealing with for decades, the shear surface is about 100 feet below the ground surface. The shear surface for this ancient slide is about 300 feet below the surface. That's just a slide showing you they're planting more wells. Many of them are to replace sheared off wells. Now let's get back to this NASA study. And I believe this is being done in conjunction with JPL and California Office of Emergency Management Services. And JPL collects their NSAR data, their, their, their microwave data to detect relative movement between flights with a Gulfstream 3 aircraft that's outfitted with the antenna. And this quote really caught my eye from this article. So let's just start out. It talks about the darkest part of the image indicates the higher rates of movement. The arrows represent the direction of horizontal motion and the solid lines are the boundaries of the active landslide area as defined in 2007 by the California Geological Survey. And here's a quote here from the JPL landslide scientist who performed the analysis. In effect, we're seeing that the footprint of land experiencing significant impacts has expanded and the speed is more than enough to put human life and infrastructure at risk. So that really caught my attention because the geologist working on behalf of the city has stated that they don't see a risk to life, no safety risk, that they thought this slide was moving at a slow enough rate that they could evacuate people, uh, red tag houses, that, and they've done that for a number of houses already, so they don't allow occupancy. But again, I don't know that there's been enough instrumentation throughout this landslide area to really get a handle on fully what the risks could be. So let's just look at some of the images from their GPS data collected for this landslide area. This is overall movement rates in August of 2024. You could see there's a large red area with higher rates of movement compared to October. Things are slowing down quite a bit. So in the city study, they determined that they were looking at maybe eight inches of movement in this time period, whereas JPL was showing about four inches of movement. I previously did a video about NSAR data uh, from satellite-based uh, radar. And one of the things I learned from value space about this is that if the rate of movement is very, very high, such that there's large displacements between overflights, which occur every 12 days, you can miss some of the movement. So you may underpredict the overall amount of movement. I don't know how many flights uh, NASA or JPL performed uh, for this area and to what extent that they think the readings may have been affected by the high rate of movement. So if you just take their apparently lower bound value compared to the city's measurement of about four inches of movement from September to October last year, that's still a lot of movement. So, you know, I'm not wanting to be alarmist here, but at the city council meeting, one council member, and I don't recall his name, made the point that they're spending lots of money on wells, but they're spending very little money in comparison for instrumentation for monitoring. And it was his suggestion really that they need to put in a lot more instrumentation to get a handle on what's going on here. And I believe that to be true. Uh, I don't understand, well, let me back up. I can understand people wanting to do something. I mean, this, these are people's homes. Uh, many of them have nowhere else to go. All their assets are tied up in these houses in some cases. So I can understand the desire to do something. But I think it's also incumbent on the people spending the money to really qualify how effective this could be and what are the, what are the risks uh, in terms of, you know, I've talked in a number of videos how so-called extreme events tend to occur far more frequently than humans tend to allow for. So questions I have are like, how many dewatering wells do they need in operation and how much discharge do they need per day to handle a normal years of rainfall? Another question I have is what if they have abnormal amounts of rainfall in a given year? How many wells do they have for that? You know, I used to monitor instrumentation data for large embankment dams on the Missouri River 
and uh, it was quite interesting. It was heavily instrumented, but you could see a fluctuation in the reservoir elevation, and then you would look at downstream piezometers on the dam, and it would take over three months for those downstream piezometers to reflect the change in reservoir elevation. So there's a, a time delay uh, when it comes to water infiltrating uh, soil masses, affecting slide movements. You know, I'm curious to what degree there's been a hydrologic study done here. If you take the whole area of this landslide area and calculate how much rainfall could occur across the area, that's pretty straightforward. But then you have to figure out how much actually infiltrates and how much runs off pretty quickly to the ocean. Now, I haven't heard that discussion yet, but I'm sure someone has looked at that. But again, I'd like to see the numbers to know, are they really keeping up or did they discharge water and seemingly had some effect during an extremely dry period and with a normal amount of rainfall or even additional rainfall, their dewatering system uh, could potentially be overwhelmed. I don't know. It's, it seems to me that that's a real possibility. So please let me know what you think in the comments section. I've uh, started Buy Me A Coffee. There's a link in the description if you would care to check that out. That's an excellent way to support the channel. I also want to send a shout out to channel members. I've had channel members for over a year in some cases, and I really appreciate your support. Channel members often reach out to me and, and give me story ideas or uh, news leads that I can follow up uh, for future videos, which I really appreciate. And of course, I'd like to thank those of you who have provided super thanks. So thanks very much, everyone, and please stay tuned for future videos.